Hey guys, welcome back to week 18 of the MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled in MIT. So I just got back to Vancouver and I finished classes 11, 12, and 13 of the total 33 that I'm going to be doing for this MIT challenge. And I've started another four, and with these four, once I'm done them, I'll be halfway done the entire challenge. And because I had eight elective classes, which I'm saving for a little bit later, I'm getting into some of the meteor computer science topics. So right now I'm doing artificial intelligence, design and analysis of algorithms, which is a follow-up to the introduction to algorithms course and gives really interesting extensions to those ideas. You can do pretty sophisticated algorithms on parallel computers and understanding complexity theory and algorithms that work most of the time, but not all the time, but they're really fast. It gives you lots of really interesting extensions from the basic algorithms that were done in introduction to algorithms. Uh, circuits and signals and systems are the other two courses, which are electrical engineering courses, which allow you to understand how our computers or computer components made from the bottom up, from the very basic structures of wires and resistors and elements. And signals and systems allow you to analyze a system, which in, is very important in an electrical system, a circuit system, of if you give it a certain input, what will the output be and what's the math for understanding that. So taking really complex systems, so this doesn't just apply to computer science, it also applies to biology and physics, and reasoning about them in terms of being a system in order for you to understand them. Now my favorite class that I'm doing right now that I've started is artificial intelligence. And this is a really fascinating field and I was really couldn't wait till I could start this one because it is one of the areas which it branches with human uh, cognition and cognitive science and it really has a lot of practical implications. So a lot of the computer science theory maybe doesn't have the most practical implications for programming, but artificial intelligence does have a lot of practical use. So things like Google Translate is the ability to translate documents automatically from one language to another. That's not a trivial task and it uses a lot of complex algorithms from machine learning and other disciplines in order to perform this. So understanding how uh, machine learning, first order logic, and all these basic principles of artificial intelligence works uh, really gives you an understanding of being able to start working on these things and start building up the skills if you wanted to be able to build smart programming systems in the future. So one of the questions I've been getting, and I can finally respond to it because I'm getting into some of the harder classes, is when you're getting to the higher level classes, are you finding them harder? And I think there's two good reasons for this. One, we have an intuitive sense that the further something is along in a program, uh, the more difficult it is. And second, because the method I'm using of learning these things, things in a very short period of time uh, often asks the question of, well, am I learning deeply enough to be able to use those ideas on the later classes? And I haven't gone through all of the, the hardest, highest level classes yet, so I'm, I'm going to make this as a just a first prediction. But what I've noticed thus far is that it hasn't been making them harder. As I've been going further into the classes, it hasn't making them harder. And in fact, something really counterintuitive that I wasn't expecting is that some of the higher level classes are actually easier than the first level ones. So in order to understand why I've been experiencing this, it's because a lot of the ideas in a field are interrelated. So as an example, one of the classes I took uh, earlier, which is differential equations, introduced the idea of a transform or the Laplace transform. And at the time, I didn't really understand the motivation for learning it. I didn't really understand how it was used, and I didn't understand all the different perspectives that you can look at it. I was taught it in one way, and I wasn't really taught a lot of the practical significance. And so as a result, it was hard to learn this idea. It was hard to really wrap my head around it, especially in the tight time frame of learning that differential equations class in only eight days. However, since taking that class, I've been exposed to several classes which use the ideas of transforms and convolutions in probability in several of the computer science classes and the merging of seeing it from all these different perspectives allows me to understand the idea a lot better and so by the time I'm taking a, the same idea or the same basis of an idea in a different class I've seen it three or four different perspectives which makes it much easier to learn because I have more room to work with more wiggle room to understand how the idea works so yes, the technical demands of taking a higher level class are more difficult, but I think that if you look at the problem holistically and if you look at how you're learning things in these connections of ideas instead of just compartmentalizing different topics, 
then the more you learn, the easier it becomes to learn a subject because you have so many more different ways to look at the topic or different connections that you can make. And so I don't have any doubt that the higher level classes, and particularly if I take some things at the graduate level, that the technical rigor will make the classes more difficult. But in terms of just getting a conceptual understanding, it's often easier to get those ideas because you have so many other perspectives to look on that idea upon. So thanks for following me, and I'll be back next week with more updates from the MIT Challenge.